Noise textures in geometry nodes can help create random displacements. However, to make it loop, it takes a lot of time to set up every single time. So in today's video, we're going to learn how to use a little bit of math and a one-time setup so that you never have to set it up again and you get one reusable node that you can use in any of your projects. So without any waste of time, let's actually begin creating the project. Before we start with the node, I'm going to actually set up the scene. So if you want to skip this, you can use the chapters down below to get directly into the looping noise texture. But for now, let's bring our cursor to the junction of these two windows, click and drag to create a new window, and then switch this from the 3D viewport to the geometry node editor. Then we'll press this plus button to create a new geometry node tree, after which we can select the group input and tap X to delete it. Then we'll press shift A and search for an icosphere and plug that into the group output. And I'll increase the radius to five and the subdivisions to five as well. Now to actually create the displacement, I'll go ahead and press shift A and search for a set position node. And to actually displace it, we will use a noise texture. Now to create this looping noise texture, the first thing that we need is an actual noise texture. And we're going to need the noise texture to be in four dimensions. Now, once you switch this to 4D without anything else selected, if you select it and just press control G, it converts it into a group with all of the inputs already connected and the outputs already connected, which makes it a lot faster. So if you go back to the original node tree by pressing the little back arrow that will be present up here, you'll see that this is now a group. So you can see in Blender version 5, groups are denoted by these stacks of nodes, as you can see over here. Now let's go ahead and just rename this by pressing function F2 and calling this something like looping noise texture. And I'll rename the node tree also to looping noise texture. Now again, to go back into the group, you can just double click this and it brings you in. So the first thing that we can do is remove this factor in the group output because we don't need it. So let's just select that and press this little minus button. And then we can start playing around with the actual group inputs. So first off, this W is no longer going to actually depict W, but it's going to be the max W. So I'm going to rename this over here in the side panel to W underscore max. And if this side panel isn't present, you can tap N to just bring it out. And you have to ensure that the group input node is selected and you go to the group tab. Then we can go ahead and disconnect this W and we need to create a mathematical logic that will allow us to go between specific numbers. So if you've watched any of my videos where we've looped noise textures before, you've seen that we generally take the W from a value of minus something to a value of zero over time. And then we have another noise texture that will go from a value of zero to a value of the positive of whatever this was. So plus one. And that's how we get it to loop. Essentially, as the first texture goes from zero towards one, the second texture goes from minus one towards zero. And the factor essentially changes from this value to this value over time so that at the start or the end, the value that's being taken is a value of zero and it becomes perfectly looping. Now, this doesn't have to necessarily be at zero. It can be between any two numbers. And to allow for variations, we need to ensure that we can give the option to go to a random number. Let's say that random number is X. We need to go between a negative value or essentially, let's say this distance was called W max. So we have to go to X minus W max. So this is going to be X minus W max. So we're going to go from X minus W max to X. And on the other side, we're going to go from X to X plus W max. That's essentially all that we have to do. So we need to have an input for what this X is going to be. And we already have W max. So let's go ahead and set that up. To create a new input, you can just drag it out from here. And essentially, the first thing that we wanted was X minus W max. So let's press shift A and search for a math node. Let's change this from add to subtract. And we already have W max. We wanted X minus W max. So let's take a new input, plug that in right over here and subtract out W max. So we can just do that. And instead of doing this using this group input itself, what I'll do is I'll just press control H and bring this close here and then add in a new group input over here so that everything remains nice and clean. Now this value is not going to be value. We'll call this random seed and do random seed minus W max. And essentially the frames need to go from zero to whatever your looping frames is. So you need another input, which is going to tell us how many frames it's going to loop over. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's press shift A and search for a scene time node and we can choose the frame and we want this to loop over this many frames. So we search for a math modulo node and that is going to be an integer math node. So let's press shift A and search for integer math and modulo. So then we can take the frame, plug that into the first value, and we can take another input and plug that into the second value. And that new one is going to be the looping frames. So I'm just going to call it loop frames. 
and I can click and drag this up to the top before W max, because that's the most important thing, which is how many frames it's going to loop over. Now, this transition from X minus W max to X has to happen as this scene time frame goes from zero to whatever this max loop frames is. So we press shift and search for a map range node. And essentially the value is this. Now, the reason why we're using this math modulo node is because modulo gives us the remainder after division. So if we have this at 10, scene time is going to go frame number one, two, three, four, and so on up to 10. And modulo is going to give us the remainder after division. So if loop frames was kept at 10, it would give us the remainder. So if you divide one by 10, the quotient is zero with the remainder as one. So the output is going to literally be just one, two, three, four, and so on, right up until 10. At 10, it's going to again be zero. And then at a value of 11, it's going to go back to being one. And then at 12, it's going to be a remainder of two. So we essentially get it to loop by going zero, one, two, three, four, dot, 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 all the way to nine. And then again, goes back to zero, one, two, three, dot, 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 all the way to nine, and so on and so forth. So it's going to repeat every time it reaches loop frames. So that's what we're going to keep at the value. Now from min is always going to be zero. From max is going to be the loop frames. And now the two min is going to be, as we stated over here, x minus w max, which is right over here. And the two max has to be x, which is the random seed. So we take this random seed and plug that in right over here. So this gives us the perfect value for w that's going to go into our noise texture w. We can take this and plug that into w. Now that that's been set, we can go ahead and create this section where it has to go from x to w max plus x essentially. So let's duplicate all of these nodes and then just press shift D to duplicate them, move them up. And now instead of subtract, this is going to be add and that's going to be the max and the two min is just going to be the random seed. So once that swap is done, this is pretty much it. And now you can go ahead and mix these two noise textures. So to mix them, we press shift A and search for a mix color node. We plug that in right over there. And this color can come into the first socket. This can go into the second socket. And the factor has to go from zero to one. So in order to make this go from zero to one, we essentially need this value to go from zero to one. We can just go ahead and select these nodes and duplicate them. So press shift D, bring them out over here. And instead of having this two min to be this random seed, let's remove that and just have it to go from zero to one. Now this result can go into the factor of the mix node. So just to make everything look a lot more clear, we can go ahead and select everything and then just press control H to hide all the unnecessary sockets. You might have to press it twice in case you've pressed control H previously. A lot of these nodes could have used the exact same value. Like to be fair, I did not need this setup over here. I could have used nodes from here, but I just wanted to keep everything as clean as possible. So we've kept them completely separate without having nodes or noodles going from one section to the other. So after rearranging everything, this is all the node tree is. It's very simple to get looping noise texture. The last thing is often you want control over how much strength there is. So we always add a vector math node, and I'd like to have that within this node group itself. So I'm just going to press shift A and search for a vector math node, and I'm going to have to choose the scale option so I can directly search for scale, plug that in right after the mix node. And for the scale, I'm going to use another group input node, and that's going to be a new value. So I'm just going to drag out another noodle, plug that in, and this is going to be called strength. I can just hide that and that's it. So now if I was to go back on top, this is the new looping noise texture that we have. We can plug that into the offset. And another thing that I might have forgotten to mention is these noise textures, if they're normalized, they're going to slowly move towards the top right. So to prevent that, you can just uncheck normalize on both the noise textures. Ensure that you do that. It's very important to keep everything centered around zero. So now that you have that, if you press this little back button, you can see that we have something that should be looping. Let's say we wanted to loop over 150 frames. We can change our end frame to 150 as well. And then for the W max, I'm just going to keep this at a value of maybe one. I'll reduce the scale down to something really small. Let's go with 0.2 and let's increase the strength to something like two. So now when I play the animation, it, you can see that it is moving, but it's moving very slowly. So let's go ahead and increase the W max to something like 10. And now it's moving a lot more. And essentially right when it hits 150, you should see that it perfectly loops and you can't even see that it actually looped. 
So that is what we mean by creating a perfectly seamless loop using this noise texture node. Now, if you just wanted to know how to create this noise texture node, that's the end of the video, but there's a lot of tips and tricks that might help you. So I would suggest you stick around. The first thing is this can now be converted into an asset. And to do that, you have to hover over the name that's right over here, right click and click mark as asset. So once this is an asset, you will have to save your blend file into your asset browser path. For example, if you were to switch this over to the asset browser, you see you have this, this user library and you will have to set the folder by opening your preferences and choosing the folder in which all your blend files that have the assets are stored. Once you do that, this becomes an asset and you can simply press shift A and search for looping noise texture and you instantly get it. So you will no longer have to set it up in any of your other blend files as well. The next thing is that this motion you can see is moving every point individually. And sometimes you would actually want this entire thing to move around a lot more. And if you try to increase the strength or something, you see all the points just move and that's not what you wanted. So instead, if you want the entire object to move, but you have something like an icosphere here, you can do that by pressing shift A and searching for a geometry to instance. And the reason why you would want to use this geometry to instance is because if instead of the geometry to instance, you tried using something like a transform geometry and you tried using this noise texture, you see it directly says that it's not allowed because it's expecting a single value and the looping noise texture gives you a field value. So that's why instead of using the transform geometry, you use the geometry to instance and now you can instance and move the entire thing as a whole. Let's go ahead and increase the strength to something like 10. And now you have the entire object moving around and you can create smaller motion as well by then going ahead and pressing realize instances and then you can set position once again and that will move the individual geometry. Let's duplicate this noise texture. Let's reduce the strength down to something like just one and then plug this into the offset and that's it. And to actually make this look like it's not stuck to the surface, you can go ahead and just change this random value and that's it. That's how you can create some really organic looking motion and make sure that it's perfectly looping as well. If you want to know how to create this for the shader editor, you can actually check out this video over here where we created a custom node specific for the shader editor so that you can loop your noise textures as well when you're creating your shaders. And if you want to know how to loop the noise texture so that it loops over space, you can check out this particular video that allows you to loop noise over spatial distances. And the last little tip before we go is going to be that if at all you wanted multiple points to move, you could do that as well. So let's just go ahead and create a setup for that. So let's just add in a bunch of points so we can press points and then over here, increase the count to something like 25. And now we can instance on those points, some icospheres or whatever you want it to be. So let's go ahead and just instance these icospheres here. Let's reduce the radius a little bit. And now these instances, I can go ahead and search for the set position, plug these in just like that and plug this into the group output. So now when you play it, you could see that all of these points are moving in the exact same way. And the reason why that's happening is because this noise texture is dependent on the position vector that's plugged in over here and all the points started off at the same position. Two ways in which you could change that is press shift A, search for a set position node before this set position and the offset, what we can do is just search for a random value node, change this from float to vector. And now we can change this to go from minus one to plus one on all of the axes. That'll create a perfectly distributed cube, plug that into the offset. And now when you play it, you see they all move in different ways. We can go ahead and exaggerate this by just reducing the radius of these spheres so that you can actually see how they're moving in different ways. The ones that are close to each other are still moving towards the same direction in a sense, and you could want to change that even more. This makes it look really good like a flock of birds or some a swarm of fish. I might make a tutorial on that later on, but if you want to make this even more random for this particular random seed, you can press shift A and search for a random value and then simply plug that into the random seed. So now there's not going to be any group like motion and just increase this max to something really, really large. And that's it. Now you get completely random motion for each and every single individual particle. And it no longer acts like a single object or stuff that are moving close together, move in similar directions. 
So that's just another thing that you could do. In fact, if you wanted, you could then go ahead and realize these instances by using this realize instances node and then setting the position again. So let's just control shift D that to move this, plug this in right over here and this out over there. So now you see they also have their independent motion. Let's go ahead and just use the subdivisions a bit to help speed up the animation. And let's just increase the scale a bit and reduce the strength, maybe 0 0.2 or 0 0.4. Now, when you play it, you can see these individual objects also going through their own little motion, which makes it look really, really cool. And you get some organic kind of motion. So if these are really background objects, they just look pretty cool. So I think you could create really amazing animations. And I hope you use this technique really well. I think that's all there is to talk about in today's video, and I will be releasing a lot more. But definitely, once you're done with this video, do check out how to loop noise texture spatially by clicking this video over here. So if you watched till the end, thank you so much for watching. Keep creating and don't forget to stay creative.